those of you who have watched this channel before know that my enthusiasm for cameras goes back a long way. Um, when I was a child, I was absolutely fascinated by cameras. And but later, when I started teaching, I actually started teaching as a DNT teacher, that's design technology. And I was I was fascinated in design. And cameras and design are very much things that go together. And the camera I'm talking about today certainly has some interesting design features. And that camera is this English camera called a Puma or Perma. P R sorry P U R M A. And that combination came from two people. A Tom Purvis, who was an artist, and uh, his friend uh, Mr. Mayo. And in 1935, they came up with this rather novel design of a camera Riz. Well, let's see if we can work it out. There's something quite different about what they came up with. The first camera they produced was called... The first camera they came up with was called a Puma Special. And that is the camera you often find. It's a Bakelite camera. This is a later model, which the Puma or Poa plus and it's an aluminium body. Now what is unique about this camera? Here is the camera initially. Did you hear that click? Now I'm going to tilt the camera Did you hear anything different? Well, let's try this way. Well, we have three different shutter speeds depending on how you tilt the camera. When it's like this straight on, it's a one over 150. When it's like this, it's slow as a 125th. But when it's like this, it's a fast one over five hundredth of a second because the shutter is driven by gravity. If I take off the back of the camera, you will see what I mean. We have an interesting metal shutter here, which you can see. We have to ride on, obviously, to set the shutter. But you can see how that shutter travels. And it travels differently depending on how we've got the camera set up. It takes one to two seven film and it has another peculiarity. So that's the shutter speed is one. The interesting lens cap is another because the lens recesses and if you lose the lens cap it's very annoying. It has this little tripod brush on the bottom. The other strange feature, or I found it strange initially, was you get these two red windows and that is because the um, film will actually take 16 photographs they're moderately small i think they're about three by three um, and what you have to do you wind the film on until you get number one take that shot then you put number one in the second window take the shot wind on for number two first window take the shot number two, second window, and you go on until you get to eight, and each time you are exposing it twice, if that makes sense. It's a fixed focus. <coughs> um, the f-stop is fixed for you as well at, I think it's seat 6.3. They did have a flash which went on. Now, one reason I haven't ever talked about this camera before, and I've always been fascinated by them, and I had a very nice, um, special version years ago. The issue is 127 film is not an easy film to get hold of. However, I found in my stores that I had a 127 film, so I put it in the camera, took it out, and let's see what actually happened when I developed the film. 
I think this film was dated 1993 and it was a German film I think so the film has some issues because of the age and we have a sort of bit of a texture on the film however I was really remarkably surprised with the sharpness of the camera and the age of the film actually I think gives a really interesting effect to the images. I used the camera in different um, variations of the whether I had it tilted up or whether I had it flat for the medium speed I tried different speeds and really got different effects and I was really surprised with how even if I had the camera on a very fast speed on the one um, five hundredth um, I still was able to print from it well um, scan from it it's a camera which must have in its day been really quite useful because of our variation of shutter speed and you got 16 on the 127 row instead of the normal I think it was 12. It's interesting how this camera did actually have a relatively long product life. I think they started it in 1956 and I think they were still making them in the, the late 50s. It is a camera with a real difference. The only problem with it is trying to get 127 film as I described but as a shelf camera and you can get 127 film if you hunt high and low it is a really interesting camera to have a go at. Um, the format as I said again you have to even enlarge or you um, in this case scanning works well. I didn't really have any big issues. Um, the biggest issue I've got is the fact that the film was so out of date. I gave it a bit longer in developing. I developed it in ID11. It was a etched uh, film, I think spelled E-E-K-E. -E. Um, I will check that and put it on um, as a note. So a very interesting camera. I was really pleased to use one at long last. If we do find one, well worth having a go. I'll put a bit of music on um, the tail bit of this. Um, thank you for watching. Bye for now.